Gray Hat says, I bought some high quality 6S100 Ma, 100, 100, 1000 Ma, right? He means 1000 Ma, right, Valenti? Or does he mean 100 Ma? Gray Hat. Yes, he means 1000. He means 1000. You thousand. mean 1000, right? Just confirm me. 100 Ma is like a whoop pack. There's no such thing as a 6S100 Ma. Gray Hat, do you mean 1000 Ma? Can we just confirm that? Okay, well, I'll keep reading. They were measuring over 30 and up to 40 milliohms IR after a full charge. They're supposedly 100, 200 C. Yeah, 1100. Okay, great. After watching your video, I decided to return them. There were some other opinions from trusted people saying, I hey, keep them and send them. I'm not looking for you to disagree with anybody. Thank you. If it's courteous of you to respect the people who answered your question. Sometimes you want a second opinion, but it can often sound like you're like disbelieving. And that's, that's, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm curious if you would personally be happy with the $50 to $5 success pack that came with over 30 milliohms per cell. Um, yeah, I agree that if you, if you flew the packs, like how are they going to know you flew them? But if you flew the packs, then it would be harder to return them. And I would probably, I'm not sure if I would personally return a pack solely based on the IR. And I say that because I, I, I don't necessarily check the IR of every pack I buy as soon as I buy it. Usually I'll just charge it up and send it. And then if it performs badly, I'll go, oh, so what's going on here? And I'll check the IR. Um, but if I did uh, like a 6S 1000 Ma with 30 to 40 milliohms, that it should be like around 15 milliohms. Maybe, 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 maybe. So I, I wouldn't think it would be higher than 20 milliohms. Now you said that you measured the internal resistance when they were fully charged, which is correct. You thought that's correct because the internal resistance goes down as they come up to charge. And the only way to measure internal resistance is at 4.2 volts per cell. That's the standard. The, but there's one thing you didn't mention, which is temperature. And I, I have to wonder if the battery's temperature was controlled for. Temperature has a big effect on internal resistance. Now, I'm going to guess that you were just in your house and your house is at room temperature. And so probably, but like, if they let's 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 imagine let's imagine that you live somewhere where it's winter right now the batteries get delivered to your house so they're sitting out on your porch or out on your stoop or whatever in your mailbox and it's it's cold and the batteries are cold and you bring them in your house you pop them on the charger and you charge them up and they're reading 40 they haven't come to temp yet the batteries need to sit for 3 or 4 hours maybe in inside before they will fully like the temperature come to temperature. So like theoretically temperature could be causing that. Uh, five to six hours inside. Okay. So it sounds like you did everything right at that point. I, I don't think you were wrong to return them. Like I also wouldn't think you would be wrong to just fly them, but like that's, that's not, that doesn't seem right to me. I also would question whether the tool you've got measuring internal resistance is accurate because like every charger that measures internal resistance is going to give a slightly different value. And you kind of, it's kind of like, who do you trust? Right. But it is important to know that if you and another person are measuring internal resistance, or even if you have two different chargers and you're measuring internal resistance, that they're going to give slightly different numbers and you can't necessarily compare them. Uh, so what I would say is like, since they were expensive batteries and since like for $60 a pack, I would probably send them back. I, I'm not gonna, and, and if they're gonna take them back, I'd be like, nah, like why take chances with batteries that expensive? Yep. Especially given that you know you can get good sub 20 milliohm packs for way less than that. That being said, internal resistance is not the be all end all of battery performance, but it is important and relevant. Uh, Sunshine, I'll go ahead and take Sunshine's question as well. Uh, before we continue with the super chats. Sunshine says, I just upgraded my LiPo charger and now it shows internal resistance in real time while you're charging. And Sunshine shows a, question, uh, a photo here of what that looks like. 
Uh, what are some like normal numbers? Okay, so again, you need to know that the internal resistance number is meaningless until you reach the end of the charge cycle. Okay? It's, it, it is being measured and that number reflects the battery's current internal resistance, but because internal resistance depends on state of charge, the standard is to measure internal resistance at full charge. So this doesn't mean anything. These numbers will go down as the battery comes up to charge. Um, but, but other than that, it doesn't tell us very much. He says, my 1300 milliamp hour cells are showing 10 to 14 ohms while charging. Doesn't matter. It's what they're at at the end of the charge cycle. My 1500 milliamp hour, about 17 to 20 ohms. Is there more resistance? The more milliamp hours you have. No, the opposite. Larger cells will have lower internal resistance because they are more able to push the amps out of them. Larger cells, less internal resistance. So that's backwards. But they're different cells. So, you know, who knows? How do you measure internal resistance? You, it's hard to measure accurately. You, you have to draw a small amount of current from the battery and measure the voltage drop. You, you place a known load across the battery and based on the known load, you know how much current should flow and then you measure how much current does flow and that lets you calculate how much loss you've got in the internal resistance of the battery. And the problem is the internal resistance is in milliohms. So you need to be able to measure current very accurately and a very small amount of current. And the problem is that it's, it, it can, it's, that's, that's hard to calibrate. You need a very, very accurate current calibration. And uh, so that's why there's so much variance as you measure internal resistance. He's asking how you actually check IR. It's the charger. Oh, just right? use your charger will have an IR check function. Either the charger will automatically measure IR while you're charging. So in the middle of a charge cycle, you just roll the scroll wheel and it goes through the screens and one of the screens is the internal resistance or it'll have a dedicated IR check function, which I actually like that the latter because you can check IR at any time without having to start a charge cycle. Like if I've got a battery that's fully charged, how do I check its internal resistance? What I have to do is I have to change the stop voltage from 4.20 to 4.21, then start a charge cycle, and then wait 30 seconds or a minute for it to measure the IR. Whereas with, with some chargers I've had, there's just an IR check function that'll just check the IR right now without uh, doing any charge. So does IR change at all depending on how many amperage you're putting into the battery? Mm -mm. No. I don't okay. I don't think so. It shouldn't. So I imagine that what the charger is doing, and I, I'm speculating here, I imagine that the charger is monitoring the effect that its charge is having on the battery voltage. Uh, and uh, actually, I don't know. That would be hard to do. That would be hard to do. I don't know how it's doing it during charge. It's got to have a way of doing it. Like, it's not like it's not like stopping the charge and measuring the voltage and then starting the charge and measuring the voltage. Could that be what it's doing? Like behind the scenes? It doesn't seem like it is. I, I don't know. I actually don't know how it measures volt uh, internal resistance during the charge cycle. <laughs> So then I guess one other question a lot of people in chat, at least a few people asked was, if you charge your battery faster, will you get better IR at the end when you check it because you've heated up the cells? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So I haven't, I haven't experimentally tested that, but that checks out. It is a fact that higher temperature battery will have lower IR. And it is a fact that charging your battery faster will increase its temperature. Those two things are, are facts. Now, the degree to which that happens depends on a lot of other variables that we can't really quantify. But if you charge a battery at 5C, it will be hotter at the end of that charge than if you charge it at 1C. And therefore, the measured internal resistance will be lower, even if you're doing that in a room temperature room. 
So ideally, to measure internal resistance, you would want to use a 1C charge rate so that you would get you wouldn't increase the temperature of the battery very much. But the most important thing is that you are consistent. That's the most important thing. And that you realize that it is difficult to compare your IR numbers to somebody else's who isn't using your exact equipment and your exact tech, your exact protocols. Eagle FPV says, I thought LiPos should never get hot while charging. Well, they're going to warm up. Like hot versus warm. They're going to heat up while they charge. That's a fact. That just is a thing that happens. Anytime you're putting current into or taking current out of a battery, it heats up. And the reason it heats up is the internal resistance. When you push current through a resistor, the result is energy lost to heat. And the battery acts as if it has an internal resistance. <laughs> 